Southern Africa is battling the impact of a widespread drought. However, a new threat is looming in the Horn of Africa. According to the United Nations, 12.8 million people in Ethiopia, Uganda, Kenya and Somalia are severely food insecure and in need of humanitarian assistance because of poor and delayed rains. But the African Union says it is unable to provide the emergency funding needed. Earlier on, the member states knew that it is very, very critical that AU gets a fund, a fund which is called emergency fund. And this disaster emergency fund is supposed to address some of those challenges. But to tell you the truth, this fund is more or less depleted because we don't have money in it. The AU's emergency fund for drought was established in 1984 with voluntary contributions from member states and international partners. The countries have to put in place, for example, water harvesting facilities. It rains, and once it rains, water goes to the drain, goes to the oceans. In fact, when you see the floods we get in Africa, all this water could be harvested. We could make big dams. We have to learn to make big dams. Food security isn't the only challenge. The Food and Agriculture Organization warns 15 million people in Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia will not have access to safe drinking water this year. As FAO, we think that to address these challenges, we have to address the root causes of uh, droughts and climate change. Um, <clears throat> and some of the main issues are the issue of water, for instance. We know that this government did a lot to address the issue, but we should continue. We should continue to uh, make water available for livestock, for grazing, and also for uh, production. Ethiopia has committed close to $50 million and Kenya more than $70 million. But Somalia is largely reliant on foreign aid. This is a huge burden on the international community as conditions in the Horn of Africa continue to deteriorate. Colette Ranjoy for CGTN in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Major concern there on that developing situation and the drought in parts of Africa. Well, let's now get some insights and details on this story. CGTN's Ling Tan is live for us at the UN headquarters in New York. And Abdulaziz Bilo is joining us from Mogadishu. First to you, Ling Tan, is the situation as dire, though, as it is being presented by the United Nations? Or is this yet another effort to get a response from apparently fatigued donors? Well, from my vantage point here at the United Nations, uh, an ocean away from the African continent, I can only rely on the data and information that I'm getting from the United Nations, from its partnering agencies on the ground. Uh, we heard earlier the Food and Agriculture Organization. We know the World Food Programs on the ground. UNICEF is on the ground and also from other NGOs uh, that can corroborate this data. And what we're seeing is based on this information and the footage and videos and pictures that we've seen, the situation is increasingly dire. Um, it's largely a result of man-made uh, man causes and that, it, and that UNICEF and other UN agencies continue to, to require a significant amount of funding in order to help ease this growing crisis. And yes, the UN and its agencies are uh, seeking a lot of this funding from donors who are, are already fatigued by um, humanitarian aid appeals, but that's because the situation is of grave concern to so many of these agencies. Now, you mentioned the figures earlier for these four countries affected the hundreds and thousands of children. And note too that this latest report only pertains to the number of children at risk of starving to death. It doesn't include figures for uh, for adults, for men, women, and the elderly, and it also doesn't include um, the need, the growing need among the increasing refugee population in Africa. And there are separate data for that as well. A growing concern that is adding an increased burden on uh, humanitarian needs on the continent. Well, Abdulaziz, uh, Somalia is one of those affected countries and UNICEF says about 185,000 children are on the brink of starvation in Somalia. So what proportion of Somalia is actually facing the threat of famine? What are the numbers? Well, Beatrice, according uh, to the United Nations and the Somali partner agencies here in Somalia, nearly 
half of the total country's population, nearly 6 million people are said to be, have been affected by the ongoing drought. And uh, Beatrice, it's not just the uh, drought situation that is being experienced in regions of Somalia. It's a nationwide drought, according to the Somali Disaster Management uh, Committee. We interviewed the chairman a few days ago where he said that uh, the, 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 even the regions that were considered the breadbasket of uh, Somalia. This is, uh, for instance, the middle Shabele region where the, the, the only perennial uh, river there, the river Shabele, has also dried up. So most of the, uh, those affected are towards the north part of uh, the country and also towards the border with uh, Kenya and Ethiopia. We are talking about uh, families who've uh, been forced to flee from uh, Puntland and Somaliland and as far as the Ethiopia Somali region of uh, uh, Jigjiga and uh, beyond. Uh, the pastoralists mainly who reside from all these areas have converged in an area that is uh, very far from the port town of uh, Bosasa where they are receiving uh, very little aid and they're all coming there together. We're talking about a drought that has uh, almost uh, killed all the animals. The farm, right. uh, the farm uh, rather the pastoralists are left with no option and the farmers have also moved from the middle Shabelle region into major urban centers in search of food. Right, and uh, we can hear more now also from Deji Badmos, who's joining us from Nigeria. Well, Deji, Nigeria is one of those uh, countries also listed in that UN report as uh, children facing uh, starvation there. Uh, President Buhari has previously dismissed reports of the threat of famine in Nigeria's northeast as exaggerated. Has there been any reaction from authorities there on this new warning? Well, not exactly, Beatrice. There hasn't been any reaction yet. Uh, of course, we're going to get a reaction, I guess, um, sometime maybe tomorrow or so, or as the day goes by. But let me just quickly say that um, uh, even before now, before this announcement came, especially in the Northeast now, uh, the president actually set up a committee known as the Presidential Committee on the Northeast Initiative. Now, the responsibility of that committee is to help the people, I mean, people, millions of people who have been displaced in the Northeast as a result of uh, the Boko Haram insurgency now, help them resettle. And now that peace is returning to that uh, region, help them to go back uh, to their communities and, you know, start farming. I mean, that area used to be the food basket of the country and it's one of the reasons why because the people in that region have, have not been farming uh, trade have, have have been disrupted it's one of the reasons why the un is warning that uh, you know f farming is imminent in that region but then we have seen um, this committee ramp up its activities in in the past few months we've seen that committee go in there right. with food supplies and what have you um, but in terms of this new warning now, we just have to wait and see how the government reacts to that, uh, Beatrice. Well, Lilian, to you in New York, though, uh, the UN has made several appeals to help respond to the threat uh, and now the real threat of farming here. So as we spoke earlier on about uh, donor fatigue, what kind of response has come through so far? Now, it's a little too early to ascertain the responses and the pledges that have come so far. Remember that a lot of these pledges, a lot of these funding appeals were recently made. Some, two of them in the last two weeks, we saw uh, a $1.6 billion appeal for South Sudan, a $2.1 billion appeal for Yemen. And of course, we also saw in December last year, a 22 a billion dollar aid appeal, a global aid appeal by the United Nations to help crises around the world, including uh, in Africa. And that is that kind of reflects the the state of the need of humanitarian and relief need uh, that we're facing now. Never seen before uh, since the world, the Second World War, according to a lot of UN officials. So this is quite unprecedented. And what that means, too, is that the response to these massive aid appeals are going to be very challenging. Uh, we've already seen a massive funding gap for previous aid appeals, and that's likely to continue because the reality is that we're seeing increasing uh, crises, food shortage crises in scope and scale, and also the ability to help ease this burden, to help meet these uh, humanitarian needs have also uh, diminished. Right, Abdulaziz, to you in Mogadishu, though, uh, Somalia is coming out of conflict and it has just elected a new president. So how is the country now coping with the threat of famine, considering the economic and security challenges that the authorities there face and that weak response we've mentioned from donors? 
Well, uh, Beatrice, uh, according to the Somali National Drought Committee, there's been a slow response of uh, aid and uh, from uh, the donor funding, especially from the international community and also from the government side, the response has been extremely rather slow because the, for the fact that uh, Somalia, as you've said, is slowly emerging from conflict and over the past uh, eight months, it's been uh, involved in a series of uh, political process. There's been the election of members of parliament and also the election of Mohammed Abdullah Farmajo. It's a process that lasted for almost six months. It dragged from September 2016 to uh, February 2017. And the United Nations has been of the view that uh, if at all authorities here are not uh, uh, giving more focus to the drought in Somalia, it might just result into famine as we witnessed in 2011. Famine that claimed more than quarter a million uh, lives here in uh, Somalia. So it's a big uh, challenge for authorities here and uh, one uh, big issue the president uh, of Somalia Mohamed Abdullah Farmajo who will be inaugurated tomorrow has pledged to tackle is uh, met with the donor community is agreed to hold a fast round table meeting and he has decided right. to prioritize drought as among his challenges but he's faced by uh, increasing challenges here in Somalia almost 185,000 children malnourished and 50,000 currently in uh, uh, suffering from acute malnutrition, uh, Beatrice. Right. Uh, Deji, very briefly, though, to you, uh, Nigeria's northeast has been largely affected due to the protracted insecurity caused by Boko Haram. Is there a possible solution here in redistributing food produced in other regions of Nigeria, not as intensely affected by the drought? Well, Beatrice, we've seen that happening already. I mean, we, uh, what the government is doing now is to get food supplies from other parts of the country uh, and send it to that region. As I told you earlier, that region used to be the food basket of this country, but uh, it's no longer the case. And what the government is now doing is to get food supplies um, from, from other parts of the country and send to, um, to the northeast of the country, especially to places like uh, Maiduguri in Borono State. But the challenge we have seen uh, for quite some time now has been that of logistics. I mean, the logistics of getting these items, the food supplies, um, to the places where these IDPs, for instance, would need them, it, it's a very big challenge, uh, especially as a result of, um, you know, the delicate security situation in that part of the country, even though Boko Haram has been pushed back, even though uh, the military says it has defeated Boko Haram, but we still see Boko Haram insurgents now come out once in a while to carry out heat and run attacks. So that has been a challenge, and that is what the government is trying to overcome, and even the... Um, humanitarian aid agencies operating right. in that part of the country that is the challenge militating against the effective distribution of food supplies now to uh, those who really need them badly deji badmos liling tang and abdulaziz below uh, for us there uh, thank you for your update